Today is another bright new day that the Lord has made and we are going to rejoice in it and be glad in it as we study his word. And like always, we're going to be explaining another often confusing question. So I hope you've got a pen, a paper, and your Bible. And let's get started. How was Jesus' death a real sacrifice if he knew he would be resurrected? Ever asked yourself this question? How was Jesus' death a real sacrifice if he absolutely knew that he would be resurrected. Christianity teaches that God in human form lowered himself to being humiliated and murdered by his own creations. And uh, that sacrificial death opened a path to salvation for anyone and everyone who trusts in Jesus Christ. Christ went to death knowingly. The book of Mark 8.31 tells us, And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. So he knew it. And with full understanding that he would suffer on a cross and that he would be raised from the dead, Luke 24, 46, and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And uh, since Jesus knew the eventual outcome, some question arises. And many people always ask, Was this a real sacrifice? Was Jesus' death on the cross truly sacrificial? If Jesus was guaranteed to be raised from the dead, is that a real sacrifice then? Now, let me tell you something. Those who doubt that Jesus' death was real sacrifice, they misunderstand what happened on that cross. And Christ's sacrifice was not entirely about ending the life of his human body. In truth, what happened on the cross involved more than stopping a heartbeat. This, the sacrifice of Jesus came also in his emotional suffering. Remember Isaiah 53. He was bruised for our iniquities and all that. And in an omnipotent, perfect God, being tortured and humiliated by his own creations. In the book of Philippians 2, 6, 8, it says, Who being in the form of God, thought it no robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and so forth. And there is a powerful and important symbolism in the physical aspects of Christ's death and resurrection, as well as a fulfillment of prophecy. But there is more to the sacrifice of Christ than merely the death and resurrection of a physical body as monumental as those events were. Let's look at this. When you think about physical resurrection, restoration, it doesn't make prior events any less sacrificial or traumatic. Simply knowing that something good is coming after the bad does not make the bad any less painful. And a child knowing that he will get Maybe some ice cream after, you know, removing the tons, you know, the tonsils and all that does not make the surgery and its aftermath less harrowing and uncomfortable. Seeking peace, a strong man might allow a bully to spit on him and throw food on his face. The body and the clothes can be easily cleaned, but that doesn't. At, at, at any moment change the experience of indignity and shame and we don't dismiss the sacrifice of families of military vet, veterans simply because their loved one made it home victims likewise of sexual assault may experience physical healing but that is not nearly the worst damage 
you have experienced. This is the same case with Jesus Christ. Jesus himself used the analogy of a woman in childbirth to illustrate the anguish and and that the disciples will experience at his own at 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 his death. Think about this. Jesus said in the book of John 16:20 verse 22, "Verily verily I say unto you that you shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice. And you shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned to joy. A woman, when she is in travail, has sorrow, because her hour is not come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembers no more the anguish, for joy that a man is born into the world. And you know, therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man will take it from you. Jesus reassured his disciples that their sorrow would be turned to joy and their ultimate outcome was worth it. Just as a woman who gives birth is more invested in joy of a a newborn child than looking back at the pain of giving birth and the disciples would be focused on the joy of Christ's resurrection despite their prior pain. And of course, many mothers will attest the joy of childbirth doesn't disaffirm the pain and the suffering involved in the child, in the birth. Only an extremely foolish child will dismiss a mother's birth pain by saying, so what? You got over it and you got me. The mother's agony was real and that reality still exists even for mothers who are entirely confident that the birthing process will end in joy and in health is still scary. Enduring even momentarily, insults, a dignity, disrespect is a sacrifice in itself. And this is true when the victims are finite, sinful humans, and the sacrifice is amplified when the victim is the perfect and sinless Son of God. Added to the emotional pain caused by injustice was a physical pain, something that can be overcome but not undone. The cross was truly sacrificial because Jesus experienced it in the same way as any other human being would. Even though he was not obligated to be there and he did not deserve it, when Christ came to earth, he experienced everything human beings normally do. And this included the physical. He felt physical things. Look at Matthew 4, 2. It says, And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward hungered. That was physical. John 4, 6. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus therefore being wearied with his journey sat thus on the well. It was about the sixth hour. He was tired. It was also spiritual. Think about Hebrews 4, 15. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. It was also emotional. Matthew 26, verse 37. We can read down what it says. And he took with him Peter and two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then said unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. It was emotional. Let's also see the book of John eleven thirty three. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews weeping which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. So all these are aspects of humanity. Jesus suffered the same physical and mental anguish as any of us would in the scourging and crucifixion. And the brutality of his death was not an easy thing. The cross was not trivial to Christ simply because he knew he was going to be resurrected. The gospel promises all believers will be resurrected. Uh, resurrected. John eleven twenty four 24 said, Mother said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. 
Acts 24 verse 15 it says and I have hope toward God which they, they themselves also allow that there shall be a resurrection of the dead both the just and then just Revelation 20 verse 6 blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection on such the second death has no power but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years brothers and sisters that promise doesn't make the expense of one's earthly life any less meaningful or sacrificial think about John 15 verse 13 greater love has no man than this that man laid down his life for his friends that is Jesus when Jesus arrived at the tomb of Lazarus remember he wept this is documented very well in John 11 35 Jesus wept and even even though he had uh, come to Bethany knowing he would resurrect his friend Jesus still experienced sorrow for the pain and suffering of a situation of what really happened and scripture speaks of God wiping our tears away in eternity and revelation 21 verse 4 and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things have passed away so he'll not be giving us amnesia there all things will be made right Romans 8 28 and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them that who are called according to his purpose and everything will be made new Revelation 21 5 but God never suggests that we are that maybe what we're experiencing right now feeling along the way is irrelevant knowing that goodness and restoration awaits this one offers us great resolve in the face of suffering Hebrews uh, 12 verse 2 it says looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith for who the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising shame and he sat down at the right hand of God and the throne Philippians 2 8 9 he says and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even death of the cross wherefore God also I highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name but guys hope doesn't reduce the pain or uh, deflect the injuries the death of Jesus Christ was about atonement for sin and the infinite sacrifice of God lowering himself accomplished that atonement Jesus knew what awaited him both in pain and in glory but this knowledge did not lessen his suffering. He was just as much emotionally wrought, wrestling with his options. Think about this. Mark 14, 36, And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou will. He knew it's going to be hard. And his body was just as much broken and disfigured. Think about Psalms 20, uh, 22 verse 14. We can, we can read to 18. The Bible says, I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a postcard, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws, and thou hast brought me into the dust of death. For dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I may tell all my bones. They look and stay upon me. They part my garments among them and cast lost upon my vesture. As if he was not God, man. Jesus' humanity recoiled at the thought of suffering on the cross but he had sacrificed his will to the father Luke 22 verse 42 saying father if thou be willing if thou be willing remove this cup from me nevertheless not my will by thine be done at any moment 
Jesus could have called down heavenly help, but he sacrificed his rights in order to provide us salvation. Think of Matthew 26, verse 53. It says, Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my Father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? But of course we understand the main plan of Jesus was to save us. It was not to save himself. And that's why he did all this. So, what do we answer? Was Jesus' death a real sacrifice? Absolutely. He felt all the pain. He went through all the things so that you can be saved. He did not sin, but he went through all this. And that's the end of our today's Bible study lesson. Hope it was a blessing to you. Hope you've learned something. You can always... uh, Come back to check more and download this podcast to listen later offline or to share to your friends and family. And please don't forget to favorite and uh, subscribe to our channel so that you can always be notified whenever we post a new podcast. And if you'd like to know more about our ministry or maybe to support our ministry, please go to our website, keithmuoki.com. Just go and check it out and uh, you'll get more details and even uh, we have been we have been able to pen down the whole process, the order of salvation, how someone can be saved in much detail and more verses so that you can be able to know. Please visit our website. Otherwise, I hope to see you in the next one.